Up until this point, we've been able to look at one of the most fundamental and important transformations of human history, the development of cities, urbanization, and how that transformed lives. And we've looked at the concept city. Now, I want you to think about, based on the material we've looked at so far, what your definition of a state is. Now think of all the different elements that bring in people together and form a state. And now let's challenge that view by turning our attention to another river valley along the Niger River in modern day Mali and go back to around 250 BCE to 900 CE to a place called Jenna Geno. In Jenna Geno, this was a collection of urban areas brought together they didn't have writing, so how do we look at it as historians? What's the challenge of finding the past and looking at historical places without writing? And we have to use other skills, and we have to turn to archaeological evidence, for one, of how to explain the civilization and the cities and the urban centers that developed there, and what they could tell us about another definition of a, the use of a state. So looking at this Jenna Geno, 250 BCE, archaeologists have found many mounds, these, these tells, these artificial mounds, and there were 69 of them that were filled with archaeological evidence. Population estimates between 15,000 for the main habitation sites, with approximately 42,000 for the entire urban area. This is a huge communities brought together. Sites were found in these areas for the production of ceramics, iron smelting, there was grain, rice, sorghum, millet, as was evidence of animal husbandry and fishing and ritual sites. Also, researchers did not find any evidence of temples. There were no city walls. There was no palaces. There was absolutely, get this, no signs of bureaucracy or monarchy. Rulers such as king or chiefs just didn't exist, and there was no writing. Now, there were two archaeologists, Susan and Roderick McIntosh, that excavated the sites around Jenna Geno in the later decades of the 20th century. The interpretation of the evidence they found there suggests that each urban area functioned like a small micro city state, with family ties being the dominant form of the communal connections. The families appear to have functioned as guilds organized around the production of goods, and the elders were the family authority figures, along with those considered to be master craftspeople in each family group. The rituals performed suggest that these families also venerated their ancestors with shrines at each settlement dedicated to a particular group of ancestors. For important decisions that revolved around the urban structure, it seemed that the, the leaders, the, both the elders and those master craftspeople from each settlement met together to participate in the decision-making process and negotiate together a solution. Now, this type of organization is referred to as a heterarchy, organized model that is not a hierarchy. Now think about the different organizational strategies that we've looked at in this class of how people organize themselves into communities. Now think about the information learned about Jenna Geno and how they organize themselves and how that supports and extends or challenges the very ideas about complex societies, that how it challenges the idea of a state or a city. And I would love to hear your comments below and how you think this adds to the story and adds to the depth of ideas of cities and the ideas of a state in the ancient world.